Good morning, Green Bethel Baptist Church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We'd like to thank s and N Fashion for blessing us with a face mask that has our church logo on it. Amen. Uh, deep royal purple with gold. s and N Fashion, the uh, card will be outside in the vestibule. Feel free to contact them. They also made our lap scars for us. Amen, amen. I'll say again, s and N Fashion with the mask with the church logo on it. Uh, we're trying to have and maintain corporate and in-person worship, asking everyone to wear a mask as they enter the sanctuary, amen, and maintain social distancing to keep us all safe from one another, amen. Praise God, praise God. We're going to start the service off with a musical selection, amen. We ask Sister Allen to uh, lead us in a song, amen. Set me free, oh, he set me free. Jesus died on the cross just to set me free. Set me free, oh, set me free. Jesus died on the cross just to And if 
you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, then just say you're guilty. But we want you to know that Jesus died on the cross to set you free. Now that's a praise right now. Just keep on clapping. Because Jesus, he, he, he set me free. That must be your own personal testimony, your own personal story. And you know that he, he set you free. Then you understand what we're saying. I hear your brother Gabe Wood. I hear your brother Bishop. I hear your brother BB on the drum. I hear your green bevel as you praise God by putting your holy hands together. Good to see you this morning. I love you with the love of Jesus. There's something about being in the presence of God with like-minded believers. I can see God's glory on your face and I know you're smiling behind the mask. And you know what? If God do it for you, I know that he'll do it for me. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to proceed further in the service with our, with our opening prayer. Yes, Lord. By our very own Minister Walter Wilson. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let us bow. Father God, we come this morning, dear God. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be here, Father God. Yes, yes. Father, we just want to thank you, O Heavenly Father, for letting your angels watch over us all last week, dear God. Yes, Guide us and protect us, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, we call on you this morning, O Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, dear God. Yes, yes. Asking you right now, O Heavenly Father, to just go with us and be with us each and every day, dear God. Yes, God. Protect us, O Heavenly Father. We're going through right now, Father God, with fire still, God. We're just asking you for asking you to just be with us, dear God. Yes, God. Yes, God. And make a way for us, oh Heavenly Father, and that you may be able to clear this thing up, dear God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus, oh Heavenly yes, Father. We all waited on you, dear God. Yes, God. Because we know that you have more power in your hand. Yes, God. And without you, we can't do nothing. Yes, so we're calling on you this morning, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, God. To just be with us, dear God. You know what we're going through, dear God. Yes, God. You know what we need, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, you know more about us than we know than ourselves, dear God. Yes, God. And Father God, we just ask you to carry us, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, Give us the strength, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, Give us the mind, oh Heavenly Father, yes, to be able to handle and deal with the situation, dear God. Because we know that it's all in your hand, oh Heavenly Father. Yes, and we leave it all up to you, dear God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Father God, for blessing the ones that are here. The ones that come out to hear your word this morning. The ones that come out to praise you this morning. The ones that come out to thank you, oh Heavenly Father. We just want to thank you right now, dear God. Be the one that's home, sick, nursing home, the hospital. The ones that's on their beds, oh Heavenly Father. We just ask you to give them strength to raise their hand toward heaven, dear God. And thank you enough for you, dear God. Father God, as we continue to go about each and every day, battling with this war, oh Heavenly Father, with this virus, dear God, we just ask you, oh Heavenly Father, just be with us, dear God. Give us the mind and the strength to go through, oh Heavenly Father. Let us know, dear God, that you are working. Let us know right now, oh Heavenly Father, that you have the power. 
we just want to thank you, dear God. Let us be able to trust and believe in you. And keep the faith in you, dear God. In the name of Jesus, dear God. And Father God, we just ask you to be the one this morning that are here. The one that's on their way. Be the one that's uh, want to come out and pay their tithes and all. And give their thanks to the church and to you. Father God, we just ask you to be with everybody. And bless them, dear God. Father God, we're waiting on you, Heavenly Father. We're keeping the patience for you, dear God. Because we know, Father God, that with you, you love. You are about love, dear God. You're loving God. And we just want to thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, let every heart say amen. 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 Go ahead and bless the Lord with a song in this place. I hear someone singing. Good to see you, Green Bethel. Hey Amen. If someone just go ahead and open up and lead us with a selection. And then 
everything will be all right. As we come into the sanctuary, feel free to bring your offering to the offering table. You see, I believe an offering should be the first part of a worship service. We don't need a formal invitation to give back to the Lord. If God has blessed you, then bless the Lord. Well, if God hasn't done anything for you, then just keep your money in your pocket. But I promise you, when you do, I'm trying to help someone now, you'll find out that it leaves faster than it comes. That's because we don't honor God with our tithe and all. Yes, Lord, here we have multiple ways of giving. You can fill out the traditional envelope, put cash in it, write a check, put change in it, and bring it to the offering table. Uh -huh. We have a debit machine. Maybe you don't have cash, you have plastic. That's okay, we accept that too. Just come up to the front and use the debit machine, put in your card, type in the pen, make a withdrawal and a deposit. Withdrawal from you and a deposit into Lord, to the Lord. Amen, amen, and wait for the return. Yes, Lord, uh, but maybe in the 21st century, you might have a smartphone, and you may not have cash or plastic, but maybe you have that cash out, amen. Uh, then if you don't, just download it and give your offering via cash app. If you're not here in person, you can also just cash app us. That's the cash tag sign, green bevel. Let me say that again, cash tag, green bevel, dollar sign, Capital G, lowercase r, e, e, n, with a capital B, e, t, h, e, l, Green Buckle Baptist Church. We encourage you to sow into this ministry here so that we can be a blessing, amen, and the church can operate and, and be able to further its mission. Yes, Lord, we ask our very talented musical staff to uh, give us a instrumental selection as people come and move about and place the offering. Yes, Lord.
one to be complimented. And to usher in a spirit of worship. You know, before a farmer plants a seed, he must till the ground, till the soil, to stir it up, to break up the soil. That's what the ministry, music ministry does. It breaks up your heart and softens it up and makes you ready to receive the word of God. If you don't mind, turn with us to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. Chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that's incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time let us pray Father God I come to you O Holy Master at this very sacred moment in our worship service God, without this moment, then how can souls be saved? Yeah. Lord, I pray that you forgive us. Forgive me, O oh Holy Master, for my sins, God. Anything, O oh Lord Jesus, that's in me and not like you. Yes. God, I plead the blood of Jesus. And I pray, O oh Holy Master, that you allow the gospel message to go forward in this place. Yeah. I pray, God, that your son Jesus be glorified, honored, adored, magnified, Lord, revealed to some lost soul. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, it is that our prayer, God, that the saved folk be encouraged and empowered and equipped yeah. to further the gospel message beyond the walls and confines of the sanctuary. Lord, we need you right now. We need you, O oh Holy Master, so that we can be that light, God, that's set up on the hill, propped up high, Lord, so some lost person can find their way home. God, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity. I pray, O oh Lord God, that as your gospel is preached, God, and when the congregation looks in this direction, I pray, God, that when they see Brantfield, God, and when they blink, God, they see a brand new work. They see a miracle, Lord. They see salvation, God. They see your saving power, God, your forgiving power, your redemption, your restoration, God. And then, God, I pray that they know in their heart, God, that if you can clean me up, God, you can clean them up, God. There's something about you, Lord Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. But subject matter, God says, incorruptible inheritance. 
incorruptible inheritance. During the time of this letter, Christians were being persecuted. They were considered antisocial because they didn't take partake in the activities that society uh, was doing during that time. Christians stood out, Christians stood apart, so sometime, uh, somewhere along the way, they developed the wrong mentality toward us because they stood apart from the rest of society. And to add insult to injury during that time, Nero, the Emperor Nero, he blamed the Christians for burning Rome. And I'm not talking about Rome is burning on ESPN, but I'm talking about way back, a little bit further back in the New Testament time. When Christians were being persecuted, they blamed Nero. Blamed, when, when Rome was burning, Nero blamed the Christians. So to add insult to injury, uh, they already looked at us some kind of way. They looked at us a little funny out the side of their neck because we stood back and we didn't participate. We lived a more moral lifestyle. Christians, we didn't partake of the same stuff that everyone else did. There should be a noticeable difference between a Christian and a lost person. There should be a noticeable difference between a Christian and the world. We should stand out. Am I right about it? As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we are a peculiar people. That means there's something about a child of God. Am I right about it? We know that our joy don't come from our earthly material possession, but our joy comes from knowing Jesus and accepting him as our Lord and Savior. We are uh, peculiar people because we don't participate in ungodly and immoral lifestyles or the way we live. The Bible says that we are different from the world. The problem is in our lifetime, the lines are blurred. When you look around, it's very hard to look and tell a Christian from a non-Christian. It's because we exhibit the wrong aura. We're with the world instead of the world being with us. We are influenced by the world instead of Christians influencing the world. And we wonder why society is so messed up. It's because we as Christians, as God-fearing men, women, boys, and girls, uh, we're not doing our part to exemplify Christ, to stand apart, be set apart from the world. Instead, we are just like the world and we wonder why people can't be saved. Well, maybe it's because they look at us and say, you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, then what's the difference? Uh -huh. There should be a difference. Yeah. Now the persecution it had intensified during that time and Christians were scattered in the northern region of Asian Minor. We were scattered but yet we were still connected. Just like now we may be scattered because of social distancing but I want you to know that we're still connected by the blood of Jesus. If you're in Jesus and I'm in Jesus then we're brothers and sisters in Christ. You see that's why we refer to one another brother and sister because we're connected by Jesus the Christ. Uh -huh. Amen. And if we're connected, that means we're one and the same. We're all in the same boat. Yes. Peter, he wrote to encourage Christians and to assure them of hope. Now I want you to know that Peter had to pen this letter to encourage the Christians that were being persecuted and scattered. Then I want you to know right now in today's age and time, even Christians need to be encouraged during this walk of life. Am I right about it? Every now and again we need to realize that we need someone to point us in the right direction and remind us that we have a living hope. Uh, uh, Peter penned this letter and he wanted to encourage the Christians to hold on and don't give up. Hold on and don't quit. Hold on and don't stop. Hold on and keep per persevering toward the cross. I want you to know that there is living hope in Jesus. Am I right about it? Don't put your hope on worldly items, but put your hope in the Lord. Yeah. There is living hope in Jesus. You 
know, sometimes we may hope that the COVID go away. Uh, but if it doesn't, then place your hope in Jesus. Uh, our whole church become church like it used to be, uh, where everybody is gathered together and under the same roof in the sanctuary, worshiping and praising God. Uh, I get my strength from you, you get your strength from me. We get our strength from the Lord. Yes, Lord. But seeing God's great and how good God is, it can encourage like-minded believers. Amen. Peter reminds us that there is living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. If you want to know what to put your hope in, there is living hope through the resurrection of Jesus and how God's great mercy has caused us to be born again. Yes. It's because of God's mercy that we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And it's because of God's great mercy that we we, we, we are born again. We have a new lifestyle. That means that old sinful self no longer exists. It has passed away. It went down into the grave, but it didn't get back up. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? The sin died, but the you and the Christ in you is alive. Yes, Lord. Peter reminds us of that living hope. So that means that if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the living hope is inside of you. I'm trying to help you now. I'm trying to encourage someone now. Because of God's great mercy, we're born again. Jesus Jesus is the walking, talking, breathing, living embodiment of God's great mercy toward man. His abundant mercy and that means it's more than enough. When you look at the word in abundant, abundant means his mercy is more than enough for you. As a matter of fact, abundant means it will be uh, some overflow. Am I right about it? God's mercy shined down on me. And you know what the overflow did? The overflow is enough to bless you. The overflow is enough to bless this person. The overflow is enough to pull someone from the world and start them on a brand new journey. God's abundant mercy in his son Jesus. It entitles us to an inheritance that's incorruptible. That's what I'm trying to tell you that God's mercy towards us it entitles us to an inheritance that's incorruptible. Just keep on listening. That means that that inheritance it cannot be destroyed and it will not lose its value. Yes. You know how you purchase something and once you try it out or you wear it, it loses its, its value. Yes. You look good in the clothes that you have on. They probably cost a pretty penny when they was in the store. But once you wear them and you try to give them to me, they done lost their value. Yes. When you purchase a vehicle, it costs a ton of money, but as soon as you drive it off the parking lot, it then lost its value. Yes. I want you to know that this inheritance that's yours is incorruptible and it will not lose its value. Yes. As a matter of fact, its value will increase with time. As you live life, you will value heaven just that much more. The closer you get to God, the more valuable he becomes to you. And you realize, Lord, I love you, God. That inheritance, it cannot be destroyed. It would not lose its value. It does not uh, depreciate over time. In fact, its value increases with time. As time goes on, then your relationship with the Lord becomes more valuable. As a matter of fact, you cling to God. You don't run from God. Just give God a little more time and you will realize what you have in Jesus. If you call him in the midnight hour to pour out your heart to him, I want you to know that he will listen. You won't get a busy signal or a voicemail. When you call on the Lord, you will get an answer. Yes, Lord, he will answer you. He will listen to you. He will give you a shoulder to cry on. Way in the midnight hour. If you call me, you might not get me. But if you call the Lord, all you need to do is just call him one time. And he'll be right there to your rescue. Am I right about it? I can tell him all about my problems. 
You can tell him all about your problems. Wait a minute, my bad. We don't have problems because our problems are opportunities for God. So let's rephrase that. You can tell him about your opportunities. God, here's an opportunity, Lord. Here's an opportunity for you to show up and show out in my life. And then you begin to tell the Lord what you need help with. And God will come to your rescue. He will come to your side. He will come to your aid. But you get the point. I can talk to Jesus without worrying about it getting up and beat me out the door. Amen. Amen. I can talk to Jesus without having to worry about it setting the stop sign before I even get there. Right I can talk to Jesus and I know that he would talk back and encourage me and yeah. point me in the right direction. What I'm trying to let you know is that we have an inheritance that's incorruptible. Am I right about it? Amen. Now, this leads us to our first point as we look at the context in this holy biblical canon. Deed of inheritance. That's our first point. A deed of inheritance. There must be a deed to receive your inheritance. Yes. A deed is a title to your possessions. Yes. It establishes ownership. It describes your boundaries and defines your property line. As we look around Green Bethel Baptist Church and we know that our property line is here and there, that's because the deed establishes our boundaries. Somebody have to come out and survey the property for them. Am I right about it? I want you to know that your boundaries are, are, are far and wide. Am I right about it? Because Jesus himself established the boundaries. Uh, what do you mean, preacher? Remember when Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. I want you to know he was going to prepare your brand new home. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes, Lord, a deed and entitle you to that possession. It's a legal transfer of property from one owner to another. That's what it is. It's like a title. You know you think you might own something, but if you don't have the title, then it's kind of hard to prove that is yours. Am I right about it? Amen. A deed is usually signed by the owner in the presence of witnesses. Am I right about it? Yes. It contains a wealth of information about your new property. Here's the point that I'm trying to make. The Bible is your deed of your inheritance. Yes. The Bible is the deed to your inheritance. How do you know what you have if you don't look at your deed? Uh, oh yes, God. Lord. How can you understand your property line if you don't open up your deed? Uh, maybe you don't know that you have a stream in your backyard. Uh, yes. You need to open up your deed, open up the Bible to realize that you have a stream in your backyard. Yes. And I'm not talking about the stream that you might go fishing in, but I am talking about the, liver, the rivers of life. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? I'm talking about the stream that flows from this throne. The deed of your inheritance it was signed with the blood of Jesus at a place called Calvary. In front of many witnesses the deed of your inheritance is sealed by the empty tomb. Now this brings us to right for heirs I want you to know that if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are a rightful heir. You are a joint heir with Christ. Heirs are entitled to inherit the property after the death of the owner. Am I right about it? Most of us have been touched by death in some way, shape, form, or fashion. We have or we know a person that may have been, uh, and we know someone that may have received property from a loved one that has passed away. When my grandfather was called home, he left us a little bit of property. Well, I want you to know that during the time, during that, during the time of receiving your inheritance, families are stressed, tempers flare, relationships are strained. Uh, but during this inheritance, it's incorruptible, and it is just for you. Yes. Yes. Wills, birth certificates, lawyers, probate court, or just some of the tools that's used to establish 
your rightful heirs, your claim to the inheritance, especially if the estate is large. As you turn on the TV and you look around and you see millionaires and billionaires and stars getting divorced and they fighting over the inheritance, the bigger the estate, the tougher the fight is. The bigger the estate, the more publicity you get, the more the tempers flare, and the more people are at, are at each other. Some people are even murdered because of that inheritance. Am I right about it? People would fight over a little or nothing. In the Bible, especially the Old Testament, you can read it for yourself. The firstborn son was the right for heir to the estate and to the throne if your father was a king. Amen. As you look at the Queen of England, her lineage is going to be the kingship, the next person, so that the heirs of the up and coming child is left behind. It was your birthright to receive that which your father leaves for you. I'm trying to help you now. It was your birthright to receive that which God left for you. How can I say it was your birthright? Well, it's because you were born again. Not born from your earthly mother and father, but born again from your heavenly mother and father. Born again because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Sometimes people would start spending their inheritance beforehand. They'll start making a withdrawal before the deposit is even made. Uh, if you don't believe me, then just look at the story of the prodigal son. Yes. It's in the Bible. And prodigal means wasteful, wasteful son. The son did waste his inheritance by living it up. But I want you to know your inheritance is incorruptible. It cannot be defiled. It will not be deplenished. It's in heaven reserved for you. But here, a third point, in order for you to receive that inheritance, you must establish a parental relationship. You must establish a parental relationship. How can I say, God, the Father, you have left me an inheritance if that parental relationship is not being established? Uh -huh. A parental relationship must be established to be a right for heir. A parental relationship must be established to claim your inheritance. The connection between a parent and the heir should be like an unbreakable bond. It should be like super glue. You know, if you put it on your finger and you can't get them loose, uh, if you pull them loose, then the skin will come with it. That's how your relationship should be with the Lord, like an unbreakable bond that's bound together by something stronger than super glue. It's bound together by the blood of Jesus. You pull on me, then Jesus come with me. You pull on Jesus, then I go with him. You can't not separate us. Yes. You see, sin, it tries that. It tries to pull you away from the Lord. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. And it cannot pull you away because you have established that parental relationship. Yes. You have established that blood connection with that man named Jesus. Yes. How is your relationship with God? Is God your Abba Father? Can you call God your Abba Father? You see, Abba, it signifies a close, intimate relationship of the father and his child. I'm trying to help someone now. It's like two peas in a bucket. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? As well as Abba is also a childlike trust. You know how a child would trust his parent no matter what. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord, they can fall and they can get hurt, and they you can you can you can you can tap them back in line, and they would still trust their parent. So we have to have a childlike trust between us and the Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Abba Father is a double emphasis on the fatherhood of God. Abba is father and then father is father. So we're placing a double emphasis on just who God is. Yeah. We're placing a double emphasis on what God means to us. Yeah. I want to place a double emphasis on the fact that God, you are my Abba Father, Lord. Yeah. That means I love you, God. I love you, God. You're my Abba Father, God. That means I trust you, God. Yeah. I know, God, that you won't fail me. Now, how is your relationship? Is God your Abba Father, can you trust God not to fail you? Do you trust God not to let you down? Do you trust God to give you an incorruptible inheritance? Yes. That's an inheritance that's worth fighting for. 
right now, I want you to know that is it incorruptible, undefiled, will it not fade away, and it's reserved in heaven for you. And if, and if it's reserved in heaven for you, then I want you to know that it's kept in a safe place. Am I right about it? Good God Almighty, Lord, I thank you for my incorruptible inheritance. I know, oh holy master, that it's not locked away in a safe. It's not locked away in a stronghold box. But Lord Jesus, it's locked away in your bosom. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? Because there's power, there's power, the power of God. And unto salvation, it means that my inheritance, your inheritance, will be kept for you. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? The parental relationship was established in a place called Calvary. Am I right about it? When Jesus, Jesus, when he hung on that old rugged cross, am I right about it? Jesus, you know the relationship. It was established when sin uh, manifests itself in your life and you were convicted of your sin uh, and you confess, believe, and receive. Uh, that means that a real relationship was established. And I'm not talking about Maury Povich. You know Maury Povich, how he reads the DNA results. And he looks at you and he says, you are not the father. And you might shout about it. But I want you to know, I want Jesus, Jesus. I want him to look at me and say, you're a child of the most high God. Am I right about it? Now let me, uh, let me, uh, let me define it for you. If you don't mind, then look at Romans 8 and 16. It says that the Spirit, the Spirit himself is a witness that you are children of the most high God. Am I right about it? My spirit, uh, your spirit, uh, is something deep inside of you uh, that I let you know uh, that you have that parental connection. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? And that parental connection, uh, you're, you're stuck to God, and God is stuck to you through Jesus, Jesus. And Lord, uh, as you look at the cross, uh, I want you to know uh, that he's not there. Uh, as you look at the tomb, the tomb is your receipt uh, of that spirit protection. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? You have an inheritance that's incorruptible and is reserved for you. Those are not my words. It's in the Bible. And who are you? It's reserved for me. It's reserved for you. You have to take claim to it. You have to take ownership of it. You have to establish that parental connection. You must know to have a, have a, have a, have a father to have that connection. You see, you must work through the sin and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess, believe, and receive. Lord Jesus, you must confess your sin. Believe that Jesus is God's only begotten Son. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? The perfect Lamb of God without spot or blemish. That you can look all day long and you won't find him. You won't find him. You won't find him. You can't find him. You will not find him. You cannot find it. You can look and look and search and look and look a little bit more. And you won't find a spot on Jesus. Am I right about it? Are you praying with me? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To see if you can carefully receive it. In the next word, thank you, Jesus, for my incorruptible inheritance that preserves in heaven. See, as you look a little bit further and you go a little bit deeper, somewhere around Romans 8 and 17, the Word of God says, and if we're children, then we have of God. Am I right about it? And it says, not only are we heirs, but we're joint heirs with Christ. 
If indeed we suffer with him, that we may, we may, uh, we may, uh, we may, uh, we may, uh, we may uh, in your praise, we may be glorified with him. Am I right about it? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I might be suffering now, but I know, Lord, that sooner or later I will be glorified with you because I have an inheritance that's incorruptible and reserved for me. Let us rest upon our feet. If you want to receive that inheritance that's incorruptible and reserved just for you, then this is your moment. This is the moment that you can accept the sacrifice that Jesus made for our sin. You see, sin separates us from God. And if we're separated from God, then that parental relationship is not established. But I got news for you. There's one way to destroy that separation, and it's the only way. Mm -hmm. And that way is Jesus. Yes. You must accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior to establish that parental relationship. Mm -hmm. And here's your formal invitation. If you're not saved, it is our prayer that you surrender to the Lord and receive what I have. Receive what you have if you are in the Lord. A place in heaven that's reserved just for you when you come. Maybe your relationship with the Lord has already been established, but somewhere down the line it wavered a little bit. That's okay. It still wasn't broken. Remember, the blood binds you with Jesus. You move, he moved. Move toward him and watch it move towards you. Yes, Lord. That's what we're trying to say here at Green Bethel Baptist Church. 